Hi everyone, Miss Melinda here, your spiritual worker from Miss Melinda's Metaphysical Services.com. I've had some requests um, to make videos about particular ways to work with candles and paper petitions. So I've got some candles and some examples here and I'm going to take a moment to answer some very specific questions. So one of the um, questions that I've had is how to carve a vigil candle. Um, I do always carve my vigil candles for clients and for myself, um, and I do write their name in the top. Here's my vigil candle. I write their name in the top of the vigil candle, and I usually write the name and the birth date. Sometimes I write the goals as well. It just depends on what kind of service it is and how large the goals are. There are paper petitions that go with these services as well and prayers and chanting that are said out loud. So there are a lot of different ways that cover the goals. Um, and I use an old ballpoint pen that is no longer working. And I use it the, just the same way that you would normally use it. And I just actually write in the wax with that pen, the name and the birthday. If it's a love working, then I write both of the names and the birthdays. And usually you will, um, for a love working, you'll write one name over the top of the other. So like the person who is targeting another person, you know, as in they want the other person to... Um, pay more attention to them or to draw the other person back to them into a relationship, things of that nature. You would write the target's name on the bottom and then your client's name over the top of them. Um, so that is how I carve a vigil candle with the names and personal information. I was also asked if I use, if you have to use a paper petition with all of your candle magic. You don't have to, but I prefer to. Um, I do always put a paper petition right underneath the candle, um, right underneath the vigil candle. Of course, when you put your paper petition underneath other kinds of candles, um, it's a little bit messier and that usually gets thrown out with the spell working remains. But um, in this situation, you can keep that paper petition on your altar underneath the candle um, until the candle is fully extinguished. So I have an example of a paper petition. Paper petitions are a whole um, another ball, ball of wax, and I'm not going to get into all of that today. But here is one example of a paper petition, and this is the kind of paper petition that I would use for a love working. Um, those are just scribbles, as you can see. It's a little bit messy, um, but it's the, the um, client's name. The, I'm sorry, it's the target's name, the client's name over the top of that, and then around it you would write one continuous um, sentence, phrase, or you know, some information about the goals without picking up your pen so that the whole thing is connected in a continuous circle. Um, and that's where you would put down your real manifest manifestations such as they are moving into a happy, healthy, joyous, relationship with ease and commitment. Um, I also, I've got little hearts on there and I actually do that. I like to put symbols on my paper petitions. I like to use symbols as much as possible. Um, drawing symbols, sigils, and um, archetypal images like that really helps to draw the energy that you're seeking into your services and into your workings. Um, I'm probably going to do another video or write a blog post all about that. Um, I do want to pause for a minute and say that I'm just giving you the way that I do these things. I'm not telling you that this is the absolutely correct way. I'm not telling you anything about how other people do things. I'm just telling you what works for me and the way that I do it. I've had specific questions about how I do these things, so that's what I'm taking the time to show you. Um, here is a taper candle. I'm sure you've all seen one of these before. I do actually carve the taper candle with the same thing, with the ballpoint pen. Um, it works quite well. And in different traditions, carve these candles differently. So in some traditions, they say you had better start at the top. And in other traditions, they say you had better start at the bottom. So 
what I did is I carved them from both ways. And that's how I've done it for a long, long time and that's how it works for me. So I will write the client's name or the target's name coming from the top down and their birthday and then I'll turn it around and do it on the other side as well. And then this is when you have a chance to really start writing some more of the goals down. Um, in a larger service, my vigil candles would have backup lights with them, um, at least two. And I would put more of the goals and other additional information on the backup lights. Um, also, I've had questions about um, how to apply your oil to these candles. Um, I actually do just apply it. You can put your finger inside of a, a vigil candle and apply your oil like that. I've heard of other people saying that they use tools or they use um, different ways to to do that. I actually am able to just use my finger. You do get a little bit of wax under your nails, but so what? No big deal. Um, with these can candles such as these, like um, taper candles and pillar candles and figure candles, got a figure candle here. It's still wrapped in plastic, so excuse that. Um, you will want to apply your oils in specific directions. And again, different people have different ways of doing this, and I do it both ways. I cover all of my bases. So when you are applying your oils, you want to be thinking about the energy um, and the goals that you're trying to manifest here. So for instance, if this was a working for you individually, um, when you are applying your oil in a downward motion, you are pulling it towards you. So you would want to do that when you are pulling in the things that you want to ground towards you, the things you want to keep in your life, to keep near you, or to pull near you. If you are getting rid of things, then you would apply your oil this way, going upwards to get rid of things, send it out away from you. Um, I actually bless my candles when I apply my oils. So there are a couple of different blessings and prayers that I say to myself and out loud while I am applying my oil and I apply the oil in both directions and I have different blessings and prayers that I say for each direction and for different purposes. So that's the way that I do that. Um, I do also load my vigil candles. Um, some people have questions about how vigil candles can be loaded. So after I carve into the top, I usually tap the wax, the excess wax out, kind of push that aside, and then I pour a drop or two of oil in there, and then I bless this candle as I anoint it with the oil. And then I would take some herb. This is my um, banishing and block busting herb blend. I would take some herbs and sprinkle it around in there. Now something that I see online a lot is a loaded um, vigil candle or a glass encased candle with just giant chunks of herbs sitting on top or giant like a whole cinnamon stick or a whole um, clove or star anise and um, just giant things of things just sitting on top of the wax and it's not going to burn very well that way. Um, you will quickly quickly learn that it won't burn very well, it will hinder the wick, and you will have issues um, burning that candle well. So I like to make sure that my herbs are finely ground. You can see that um, this is almost like a powder. There's not very much of this left. This is almost like a powder. It's not a powder. I haven't ground it that fine, but at times I will make very fine powders. Um, I try to grind these by hand if they're herbs that, herbs and roots and resins and barks that um, grinds up really easily if they're like softer and they grind really easily by hand and I use my mortar and pestle. If I have to make them finer or I want everything to be really well mixed together then I definitely will use a grinder like a coffee grinder or something of that nature. Um, I'm not opposed to using mechanics or using electronics in my work. I do everything by hand as much as I possibly can but you know, I'm not opposed to using electrical gadgets. So I will find finely powder things when needed. Um, so you pour your herb blend right on the top, 
And then I take a, um, another candle, like, like this taper candle, and I, I um, cover it with a very thin layer of wax. Now that's another area where you're going to be you're going to want to be a little bit careful. You don't want to put too much wax in there. It's just enough wax to kind of um, coat that very lightly and keep it secure. It's not so much wax that you're adding like a whole nother layer of wax. It should be pretty thin and that way you will be able to have this candle burning well without any hindrances. Um, let's see, what is another... So with a um, figure candle, I also carve these. Um, there are a lot of different ways that I carve a figure candle. If it is a love working, then I will often take the target candle and I will do some chakra work. I will treat it almost like a doll baby. I'll use that figure candle as sympathetic magic. And I will often do some chakra work with the target. Um, if the person needs to open up their heart, for example, I will actually take the pen and carve their heart center. I will open it up. I'll carve a heart, heart there, and then I'll also um, carve a hole in the middle of it, symbolizing opening, and opening that heart chakra, letting in and letting out that energy, being open to the energies of love and drawing love. If they need to get over some old emotional baggage from the past, if there is gunk that needs to be cleared out in order to allow them to move forward into a, a happy, healthy place in a relationship, I will put herbs in there. I often put a piece of lavender in there. So I carve the heart chakra just in a heart. I put a hole in the center with my, the tip of my ballpoint pen. I just like grind it in there until there's a deep enough hole and then I insert a piece or two of lavender and then sometimes I will seal that up with wax. Um, if you, for a love working as well, if you want one person to keep another person on their mind or to have another person on their mind, as in you're trying to influence them to have communication with each other, to be drawn to each other, to talk to each other, call each other, etc then I will write the other person's name across their head, right? Influencing them to be thinking about that person, thinking about their feelings for that person, thinking about what they want to say to that person, etc. So there are a lot of different ways to carve a figure candle. Um, most typically, I'd write their name and the goals and date of birth down the side of the candle. I usually write it down the side of both candle. I use the same rules that I do for myself with the other candles. I write one going upwards and one going downwards. And then I usually write some more um, goals and details across the base here. I often write something on their head, something that I want them to have in mind or keep in mind or be influenced by. And then I often carve chakras and I often write goals and details in other places. Basically, I write as much as I possibly can on these and I find it um, really helpful to influence the outcome of the service. I do also dress and load the figure candles. And I used to use a, um, a bone knife for carving my candles and for carving out my figure candles and my larger candles like my uh, pillar candles for loading those. I quickly found that that bone knife was too soft. It got dull too quickly. Um, I also burnt the end of the tip off many times. I was uh, resharpening it uh, myself, and that got to be too much work. Right now I'm using an X-Acto knife. It's not a perfect method, but it works well. This is what an X-Acto knife looks like if you haven't seen one. Um, and the only thing that I use this for is carving out the bottom of these figure candles, making a hole in the bottom of these figure candles so that I can load them, or pillar candles or any other larger candles. Um, you have to be really careful with this. Exacto knives are really sharp. You want to be really careful. You don't want to cut yourself. You also have to be careful about your angle and about how deep you go because you don't want to um, put a hole in some other parts of the candle or you know cut off too much of it so this is something that takes a little bit of delicacy um, and a little bit of practice um, so be careful if you decide to try to use an exacto knife 
And if you don't know what loading means, it means to then carve this out and then fill it with herbs. Um, fill it with your herb blend, the herbs that correspond to your service, and then you seal that up with wax. Um, at times I have put other things in the candles in that way as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Such as paper petitions. Sometimes you can fit a paper petition in there. Um, so there are a lot of different ways that you can get creative with this. And I think that I have covered all my bases with covering and loading, or um, excuse me, carving and loading candles. I've got a little allergy issue going on, so thank you all for watching. Um, don't forget to like the video, comment on the video, and share the video. <laughs> thank you. Goodbye.